Good morning. I'm Chris uh, with Landis. It's Chris with a K. I'll circulate contact info via Sarah um, after this so you guys can reach out with any questions that you might have. Uh, but we'll go through what we do as a program at a high level and then we'll dive into some of the details and then how we can partner as well. Uh, a few housekeeping items. We won't, I won't go through every single detail on the, on the slides. Some of them are pretty wordy. I'll circulate that around. I'll, actually, I'll give that back to, I'll um, send that to Sarah and she'll circulate it around later on so you can read through it at your leisure. Um, and then anything that we missed or forgot to talk about, or if you have a question, you can always reach out to me and I'm glad to uh, help you walk through that. So let me make sure I can switch. There we go. Um, so just a few other little housekeeping things. Um, one is we do Landis roundtables and happy hours. That's on every other Friday. So the next one coming up is going to be this uh, coming Friday. I think that's April 10th. Um, it's just at four o'clock, um, just half an hour, 20 minutes. We get other agents who are partners of ours to pop on there, talk about best practices. We had one two weeks ago uh, with agents out of Atlanta, Ohio, a couple of other places in Charlotte. Uh, and just talk about what you're seeing in the market, in your market uh, respectively. And then we gather any feedback during the week from agents that we're partners with and try to share best practices uh, with you guys to help you succeed in your business. We don't talk about us. It's just a matter of uh, us getting together to talk about business and what we can do to succeed. And then new agent training. So if you missed this, uh, if you're watching this on the replay, that's great. You'll probably have everything you need. But if you need to watch it again for whatever reason, you can always hop on. It's a live uh, training on Wednesdays that I do uh, with agents every other Wednesday. So the next one will be next Wednesday. I think that's the 15th of April. So, And I talk fast. Um, so when we get going, if you miss something, let me know. Raise, raise your hand, I guess, virtually. Ask a question. Happy to um, uh, cover something that we need to cover. Again, this is what we already talked about. We'll do the introduction. We'll get into some details and then talk about partnering. Um, this is our mission here. I'm going to move, see if I can move, there we go. Okay, now I can see the whole screen. Um, we're a 12-month homeownership program, um, and we want to help every person on their unique path to homeownership. And each person does have a unique path. I'm sure you've worked with a lot of people. Um, some people are ready today, and some people are ready in six months. And we try to help those who are going to be ready in about six months. We help you close that business today, um, so you don't have to wait. And we'll talk about those details and how that works. Get this going. So the question I'm going to ask is, have you ever had a buyer uh, who wanted to buy, but they weren't able to? Maybe they talked to a lender friend of yours um, and they weren't qualified just yet for a very various number of reasons. And the folks I'm talking about are like this person here, Tammy. So she is the mom. If you can see my pointer, is my pointer visible here on the screen? Can you guys see that moving around? Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> um, so this is Tammy. She's the mom in the middle. This is her daughter, and this is a Coldwell Banker agent. They all are in Charlotte. Uh, when Tammy came to us, this is a lot of information here, but you can see where she worked, her income, et cetera. But the, where I want to draw your attention is right here. So she needed more down payment, she needed a better credit score, and she needed to uh, improve her debt to income ratio. So this is what she looked like when she started the program. Um, and this is what she looked like as of last Friday when she closed on her house. So we actually did a web, not a webinar, we did like a little happy hour thing with her as well, just congratulating her, our entire Landis team got on uh, the call. I have a screenshot of that, but I uh, didn't put it in the slide deck. But the point is, she came to us with a situation where she couldn't buy. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot more to her story than just this. These are just numbers, uh, but they represent a story. And her story was incredible, uh, what she went through, and we were able to help her. Most lenders would have said no to her, Actually, they all did say no to her, but we were able to help her close that business. And that's what we want to do with you as a partner. The Tammies that come to you, I want you to be thinking through that as we go through the presentation. You might have had uh, Mr. and Mrs. Byer come to you three weeks ago or three months ago, uh, but they couldn't buy then. Um, and they usually go on the CRM in the back burner because you need business today. But we're able to help you get that business done today, and we'll talk about that. So think about the Tammies that might be in your pipeline or in your past you've talked to that might be a fit for this program. And the folks that we're talking about fit these roles like we talked about with Tammy. Uh, the, the third one here, unique income situation, that could be 1099. An agent, for example, we have agents that we work with um, that want to buy a house today, uh, but they can't because they only had one year of income verification. So we can work with folks like that. Um, this is the process at a high level. You refer the lead to us, uh, we approve them, they pick a house, we buy the house. Uh, and you make a commission. So you actually act as our buyer's agent. We buy the house and you're able to collect that commission on, on the closing when we purchase. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. 
And then um, obviously this helps you in several different ways, but it, the main thing it sets you up as the hero of the story uh, for your buyer. So you, because you have a partnership with Landis, a program that can help your buyer, you come off as obviously the hero and the go-to person. And in fact, that uh, Coldwell Banker agent that helped Tammy, he was able to do, she was so happy, she referred two or three other her friends and he closed another two deals uh, with us as a result. So, um, but those are ways that we, that it's great to work with us. And obviously these are so more reasons, but from this slide, basically we're a tech enabled team that has a lot of experience in real estate finance, et cetera. Um, and we're able to get the job done. So it's, uh, we, we want to partner with you on those types of deals. So um, anybody have any questions before we jump into some of the details? That was a high level um, look at everything. I'm sure if you do have some questions, they might be answered in the next slide, but um, any questions at this point? All right, great, we'll keep moving forward. So this is the slide that you saw earlier um, of our process refer, we approve, they pick, we buy, you make a commission at closing. So we'll talk about some of these in detail. So refer your lead. Uh, if you go to our website, I won't do it right now, but usually when it's live, if, the, if this presentation is live, I'll actually open up the browser and all that. But we'll go through some of these slides here. This has some more detail on it. This is our website, landis.com. Uh, you can also get to it on your mobile cell phone um, and you can log in. And once you do that, there's a bunch of words, don't worry about it. Once you do that, you'll come to a screen that looks just like this. It won't have all these entries on here, but it's basically your CRM. So any client that you refer to us, they show up in here, shows their name, email information. It, it does show their email information. We're not showing it here for privacy reasons, uh, but these are real people that are in our system. And these are the different statuses um, that they have. So we're talking about referring a client to us. When you log in, you'll see this page. It'll look something like this. You go here to invite a client and you click on this little link and it opens up a page like this and you put their information here in this box and then you literally click submit and that's it. And it sends them an email that looks like this. And all they have to do is they read through the words and then they click on apply here and they can apply to our program. So it's very easy to do. You log into the system, you go right here to invite a client you click on that, you send the information, or you put the information in, click submit, it sends them an email that looks like this. They apply. From there, you'll see their status. So you can see new, invited, applied, that means they applied. Um, there's others here. Once they apply, we look at their financial information and then we request documents to verify. So once it gets to this point, you can always reach back out to them and say, hey, I saw Landis requested your documents. Go ahead and get those over to them ASAP. It's another touch point for you as the agent. Um, but this is easy for you, so you don't have to contact us. You can if you want to, there's no problem with that, but you don't have to try and figure out you know, what's going on with them, what their status is. Did they get my invitation? You'll be able to see that they were invited. You'll see that they started the application but was incomplete, et cetera. Um, so it makes things a lot easier for you. What I'll do as well is I'll um, send Sarah a link that you can then use. You click on that link in an email, it'll send you right to our system so that you can sign up to be a partner with us of course, you can always reach out to me um, and I can walk you through this as well. There's a lot of words on this page. We're not gonna read all that. It basically explains what I just told you. Um, so if we move on to step two, so that's referring the lead. So you send the lead to us. We look at everything today. This is what we do now. We look at everything today, their income, savings, et cetera. And we look forward in time. So remember I talked about we do our own underwriting. Uh, we have our own financial models. We look forward in time to see if they'll be qualified in 12 months based upon their picture today. And if they're approved, if they will be qualified, they're approved, great. And if they're not qualified, we'll tell them that they need a little bit more time, we'll tell them why. We can't share that information with the agent because it's personal financial information, uh, but we obviously, they can share that with you. Uh, and we might be able to give you a little bit of a clue as far as, well, their credit score needs to come up a bit. We can't get into details on that, but we'll, we're glad to let you know what we can at a high level. Um, so again, we look at the snapshot today. We look forward in time. And we say, are they approved? Are they not approved? If they're approved, great, they move on to the next step. Some of the details of that, of what we look for to approve people are on this slide here. Uh, but you'll see we'll work with folks down to a 520. We'll go a little bit lower. It really just depends on their whole picture. It's not just, can they check the box? It's okay, we see the box is checked, but what else is going on with their uh, picture, the financial picture? Uh, a couple things I'll mention, no bankruptcy in the past year of foreclosure. No recent evictions or late payments on rent. Uh, no car charge up, that just means no repossession. Student loans need to be in good standing, so we can't be late on student loan payments. 
Uh, they can be in a payment plan, that's okay, but no lates on student loans, that's an automatic disqualification, uh, unfortunately. There's nothing we can do about that, but just so that you're aware. We do ask for one month's rent as a security deposit and one additional month's rent in savings. So they need to have some money in the bank in order to qualify. We don't want them to move into the house and some emergency pops up, the car breaks down, whatever, and now they're really stuck. Um, so if you read Dave Ramsey, <laughs> Dave Ramsey for the win, we're trying to have an emergency fund uh, to cover everything or anything that might come up unexpectedly. So this is the process of approval. This is generally what we look for uh, to approve folks. So that gives you an idea when you're talking to clients uh, of whether they might be a fit or not. And then let's say they're approved, great. Now we get to go out and pick a house. So this is where you come in as the agent. Really all the work that you've done to this point is send them a link to apply. Like we've done everything else on the back end and you can track that status like we talked about. So now they're approved. Uh, we're gonna say, okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer approved. We'll give them a pre-qualification letter, or excuse me, a pre-approval letter. It has the um, purchase price on there that they can go up to. Um, and then we rely on you as the agent to show them homes in that price range. Um, and these are homes that we actually own. And uh, you can kind of see what we look for. But generally speaking, um, this is the criteria that we like. <coughs> excuse me between 80 to $400,000, um, no fixer uppers. Believe it or not, there are some markets with $80,000 price ranges. Uh, single family homes and uh, townhomes are okay, no condos, no manufactured housing, mo mobile homes. Uh, less than 30 years old are preferred, but we do realize that these are, um, every market is different. And so you might have a neighborhood that they really like where the homes are like 50 years old and they've been renovated, et cetera. And that's okay, you just need to send it to us. You can email us. Uh, if you're uncertain about something, uh, properties at landis.com um, will, will work for you. So um, again, they pick a house. These are the criteria that we look for and we buy the house. Um, this is the general information that we want on the purchase and sale agreement. Um, we close with cash. So we're able to close within about three weeks. We realize that's changed a little bit. That timeline stretched out a bit just because of everything going on. Uh, we're still fully operational. Um, we're just relying on boots on the ground folks to uh, get the inspection and appraisal done. Um, some of the title stuff, it can make it a little bit sticky, but we use our own title company that does remote closings. But the point is, is this is what we're looking for, uh, generally speaking. So this brings up, if you're thinking through what I'm saying, this kind of brings up an agency question of, okay, who do I actually represent in the transaction? Well, you represent us, we're the buyer. So there's a bit of a switch of hats here for a second. So when you bring the client to us and you refer them, they're your client. They come to you, they need your help to buy a house, great, so you see them as your client. Here's the conversation you have with them. You say, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, you don't qualify right now because uh, Mr. Uh, Lender told us that we aren't gonna be ready for another six months. I have a third party company, they're, we're partners with them, uh, they're called Landis, here's what they do. If you approve with them, once you apply, if you approve with them, I will represent them as the buyer's agent in the transaction but they will let you pick the house that you wanna live in. Does that sound okay with you? And so that's, that's it. It's a very easy and simple agency disclosure um, statement uh, that you can share with them and uh, helps clarify everything. So you represent us as the buyer. So what that means is obviously you have to, you have a fiduciary responsibility to us um, and we're gonna direct kind of the, the deal flow, but or the flow of the deal, but we rely on you as the agent to give us input on home. So if a home has been sitting on the market for a while, we can go in lower, it's be aggressive on our negotiation. If a home has been sitting for a day and it's got 10 offers already, maybe we need to be a little bit more aggressive in our offer, right? So there's a little bit, we, we're not gonna know it better than you. So we rely on you to treat us just like you would treat any other client and give us that fiduciary um, uh, relationship and advise us on the transaction. This is what we're gonna put on the PSA um, but as far as the, the deal, the market, et cetera, really rely on you as the agent to do that. Boots on the ground, we can't do it better than you. Um, we do have them sign a 12 month lease agreement. They also sign a future uh, uh, a lease with a option to purchase. So they know um, the future purchase price. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, it's a 12 month agreement. So they don't go longer than 12 months, it's 12 months. Our program is, if they need a little bit more time, another couple of months or so, we can do, we can extend it on a month to month basis at a 4% rent increase. Um, we'll talk about a few other things um, here. So on, just so that you understand, uh, we want them to buy this house back from us in 12 months. 
So down here, repurchase client can repurchase the house, purchase the house within 12 months at a 3% premium to original market value. Uh, it's 12 months for a reason because there's enough time to fix whatever's going on with their credit or down payment, et cetera, but there's not enough time to say, well, I'm gonna live in this as a rental and when I close, I close. We want them to be working with the mindset of a homeowner no longer as a, as a tenant, no longer as a renter. We want to make them into a homeowner. And so to that end, anything that's uh, 200 bucks and above, any repairs, uh, we will split that cost 50-50 with them. Anything less than 200, they're responsible to get that fixed. When we get the appraisal done, excuse me, when we get the home inspection done, uh, we ask you to invite them to the home inspection. We want them to be present if they can be so they can see what's going on with the house and ask the inspector any questions they want to ask. We ask you to share with them the inspection report and go through that with them and let them look at it. And after, if they have questions or concerns, we want to know what those are. When they move into the house, we don't have pet fees. They can have pets in the house. They can paint whatever colors they want to paint on the inside of the house. Uh, we want them to feel like this is their home because it is their home and we want them to become a homeowner. Um, so those are some of the, the things that are on the slide that I want you to be aware of. Um, and then as we move along, we close, obviously, is the next step. We close and you make a commission. So at that first closing, you've represented us as the buyer, buyer's agent, and you get that commission. We don't take a referral fee from that or anything. That's all yours. The way that we make money is that we charge a uh, rent, obviously, in the market, and we um, have a 3% price increase. Those are the two ways you make money. So if you think about that, sure, we collect rent along the way, but you don't make a ton of money from your rent. You're gonna make that more in the back end when they buy. And that's why we want them to become a homeowner and have that mindset. So it's really, really important to our business plan. If they don't complete the program, that might be a question that you have. Uh, we'll talk about that right now. So what happens after you get paid and the tenant is in their dream house? Well, they move in and we help them uh, get ready to purchase the house. We do our own in-house financial counseling. We don't, ex um, we don't um, outsource that to anybody. We do that in-house, we have our own folks. We coach them along the way. Uh, we build up the down payment as a portion of their rent, and we report their rent to the credit bureau. So it gets that they get that credit bump along the way, the credit score bump. But back to that middle section, build up a down payment as a portion of the rent. What does that mean? So let's say the rents are a thousand dollars in some neighborhood somewhere for a three two. So great, it's a thousand bucks. We're going to charge them twelve hundred, and the reason is the difference of that two hundred dollars. We're gonna put that into a savings account for them. It's a down payment fund, we call it home ownership credits. We're gonna save that money, that extra, along the way as they're renting from us. So I'm using that as an example. I'm not saying that everybody pays a thousand and we're gonna save a 200 bucks from everybody. That's not how it works. It's on a case by case basis. But the point is, is that they pay a total amount to us and it's broken up between market rent, the rent that we charge and the savings account. And they see this on their paperwork. They know exactly what they're getting into. All of this is open book. If you go to our website, we actually show how we make money. It's on our website. So uh, everything is open. But they know that they're accruing that portion. That's going to help them uh, become a homeowner and think with that mentality and really not have to think about saving. Anybody who rents a home has to save above and beyond whatever rent they're paying. And if it doesn't happen automatically, it likely won't happen. So that's why we do it this way. All the rents are collected online. Uh, via Cozy. It was on an earlier slide. We use Cozy as our rental management platform, and uh, it's just done automatically. Uh, we're staying in contact with them so that if they don't complete the program, let's say they want to walk away um, for whatever reason in month 10, uh, they know this upfront that they're going to lose half of the down payment fund that they've accrued. So if it's 10,000 bucks, let's say, in savings for them for their future down payment, they walk away, they get five, we keep five. And the reason we keep five is because we're going to contact you as the agent. We're going to reach back out to you because you're in our CRM, because you invited them through the CRM. They're connected to you in our system forever. We reach back out to you and say, hey, we need to list this house for sale. Uh, we're not going to have a rental property portfolio beyond the 12 months that people are living in the home. That's not our goal. So that makes us a bit different than the other companies that are out there. So those that's what we do with them. We want them to become a homeowner. We want them to be successful in the program. This slide pretty much covers everything I just talked about. Um, so we won't go into the details on that. So um, any questions up to this point? We talked about the high level of what we do. Maybe you're thinking hopefully about the Tammies that might be in your pipeline or previous contacts you've had with buyers and sellers that might be a fit. We talked about some of the details 
of how the program looks and works. We'll get into partnering, but at this point, anybody have any questions for me? Hey, Chris. Hi. Oh, go ahead. I think hey. Jamie, you were going to ask your question. I was just going to make sure. <laughs> oh, okay, got it, got it. Okay, no problem. You're uh, actually, I'll, I'll include two then. Um, is that what you were saying, Sarah? Were you saying that to Candy? Yes. <laughs> okay. I actually have two questions. Okay. Um, I noticed in step four that it didn't mention anything about having a due diligence fee as part of the contract. In yeah, North so Carolina, we, we do use that here. How does that work with you? We typically don't want to put down a due diligence fee, and we know that that's more market specific. Um, so it's kind of funny. We're talking about this. I'm doing auditing with a superior school to teach at Superior. We talked about due diligence fees as we're going through the contract. So I'm very aware of what you're talking about. We don't typically like to do a due diligence fee. We're an all cash buyer. We can close in three weeks. And if we can leverage that uh, with the seller, then we'll do that. If we need to put something down, we will, but we're going to um, we're going to push back against that at first just because we don't want to lose that money up front. Understood. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't I we don't very often run into a seller who's willing to take zero due diligence money. That's why I asked. Yeah, no, totally understand. Uh, again, if it's a house that's hot, let's say it's got 10 offers, it's been sitting for two days, um, and everybody else is put down, you get a feeler from the seller agent, like, hey, this is pretty competitive, you know, we're getting due diligence fees of whether they can disclose it or not, but you can, they, you'll get a feel for how competitive it is. We want that input from you, and we'll make an inter internal decision on that. But don't get me wrong, uh, we've done a number of deals in the Charlotte market, and this is how we do it. Uh, even over Gastonia, Salisbury, um, Kannapolis, um, we've done some in Greensboro, Greensboro Winston-Salem, Raleigh. So we're aware of what's going on in the market. We don't like to do due diligence fees, but if we have to, we will. Understood. Okay. And I do have one more question. Um, when you were explaining about a portion of the rent going down toward the down payment, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that you had obviously attorneys in helping you this, but where my question is coming up is when I've been involved with sessions with attorneys before, and they talk about part of the rent money going toward a purchase, that it opened up a legal window that gave the renter some legal claim to the house, and that's why we were always advised against doing lease purchases. Have you um, had any know. explanation to you about how that might be different? No, um, we've been doing this now over, I don't know how many deals exactly in Charlotte, in the North Carolina, South Carolina market, Ohio, other places. Um, we have a homeownership agreement that spells out what happens. We use a local lease with an option to purchase uh, contract. They're very common in commercial real estate. Um, so we're not too concerned um, with that. They do get, they put the security deposit down. So those, the part where it could get a little bit sticky was with the security deposit. Of course, if they walk away, they get that back, right? Uh, less any mm -hmm. damages. So we can't keep that. Uh, but the down payment portion, we are able to keep. Um, it's it's not, not been a problem for us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? So uh, this is Rogacia. Do you, does this mean that you have your own lenders who do the final um, financing for the clients when they do qualify? I'm glad you asked that question. No, we don't. We don't have, we're not a lender. Uh, they can use whoever they like to use. So if you guys, if Remax or if you, you individually have a great lender partner you like to work with, we would love to have them involved in the process from day one, from when they move right. in. Because if we're counseling them and a lender is working with them to get them ready, that's wonderful. And that allows us to partner with lenders. So we don't partner just with agents, we partner with home builders, um, other folks and lenders as well. Um, so we're not excluding anybody from this. Um, so yeah, we don't make loans. Um, so they can use anybody. If they don't have somebody, we'll happy to refer them to three different lenders to get a, you know different um, quotes on the rates, et cetera. Just do it the right way. But if you have a partner, please, we'd love to have them involved uh, from day one. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the partnering section. It's really short, so don't worry about that. If you have any questions, we'll hit some more uh, at the end. We just talked about that. So how to partner with us. Um, there's a lot of words here. Basically, uh, we, we try to reach out to the brokers in charge or the office managers or the sellers of the world. Uh, we want to get your listings. Um, uh, usually once a week, we like to get those on Monday or Tuesday, however you want to work that out. But uh, what we do is we take them and we put them on rent rental websites like Zumper and RentLinks. If you go to those websites, Zumper and RentLinks, you'll see that it costs money to list a property for rent on there. 
uh, we have an account with them that we pay for. Uh, if you send a listing to us, like listings to us, like in a spreadsheet or however you want to do the MLS sheets, that's fine. Uh, we'll take them and put the name, address, you know, the basic information on those websites. And in the description, we'll put want to rent to own this home, click here, takes them to Landis, they apply for our program. If they're a fit, um, we'll call you up and say, hey, we want to buy your house. You'll be a dual, dual agent on that uh, house, as long as you have permission from the seller, you'll be a dual agent on that deal. Um, and collect both sides of that commission. So we don't take referral fees on that. So literally, I mean, if you think about what I just said, uh, I said, hey, send us your listings once a week, every Monday or Tuesday in a spreadsheet or the MLS sheets. We will literally take all that information. You, it took you five minutes to put it together. We'll do all the work on the back end. We'll do all the work qualifying uh, leads. We'll do all the work getting them ready to go. And all we'll do is make a phone call to you and say, hey, we'll buy your listing. So literally, you did five minutes of work to try and find a client that, that we, as your back-end office, uh, took care of the rest of it. So there's really no reason not to do this. If you think about your listings, you might have four, five, ten, one, doesn't matter. Send them to us at partnersatlandis.com, um, and we'll, we'll market those things for you for free. Um, it's because we make money on the rent we charge, again, and the 3% price increase. Um, so we're not trying to cut you out of the deal. And the other way is become a talk break agent. So send us more leads. The more leads you send to us, we have a ranking system in our, in our, um, uh, on our back end. And we'll see, we get leads that say, uh, leads that tell us that we don't have, they don't have an agent. So we literally have to call and say, hey, we need an agent on this one, we need an agent on that one. We did this in Atlanta like a couple weeks ago. We've done it in Charlotte several times. Uh, we reach out to partners that we have that send us a lot of leads and we send them clients back. Um, we needed them to go show a house. And that's, I mean, that's super, super easy. So, um, so those are the main two ways. Other things you could do. Question. You, go ahead. Yes. Uh, is this for houses only or land as raw land as well? Houses only. Yeah. So a great question. Actually, I didn't cover that on that slide. So no raw land. And it also depends. I've had folks come to me with like 10 acres with a house on it and it's under $400,000. We might say no to that only because even though it fits the $400,000 cap, um, it would be hard to resell that. You're looking for a very specific buyer for that type of land, uh, that much land with a house on it. Um, so there are some nuances there, but generally that list I went through earlier on, you'll get these slides so you can go back through all this stuff. Um, but um, yeah, so it's a little bit unique. That's a unique situation. No land though. Thanks for asking, appreciate that. Um, what you can do is if you want like, you know, pictures like this, we have others. This is just an example, uh, pictures like this, um, if you want to put something like this in your signature line, if this is kind of your niche or niche, um, great. I had actually have had some agents do uh, first time home buyer seminars. Um, I have one that's working on doing a virtual home buyer seminar that I'll pop in just like this, you know, for five minutes and talk about what we do. Let them do the main part of the presentation and talk about whatever they want to talk about. Um, and then I'm there to answer questions. So this is super, super easy to do. So if you have a pipeline of folks or you want to get one or two people on the phone, uh, or in a webinar to do something like this, I'm happy to do it because we're partnering again. If we close, if you close, if you bring us deals, then and we close on that, we both win. Um, I had an agent do a live one. She sent us about seven leads from that. Um, I can't remember how, how many we got qualified, but the point is, is we she did a live one, maybe had 15 people show up um, and then sent us several leads from that. So happy to partner with you guys in any way possible via social media, webinars, and then hopefully when the world goes back together, uh, we'll be able to do them in person live. Um, crazy times we're in. So next steps. So we went through everything at a high level, right? We talked about Landis. We talked about the Tammies of the world. And we just closed on Tammy's house last Friday. Um, and then kind of the details of how to partner, send us people, what we do on the back end to qualify, what we look for in a contract in a house, um, and then what we do with them once they move in. And then some easy ways to partner with us going forward. Uh, we're happy to uh, to jump in on stuff like that. So if you think back through your pipeline, who are the Tammies? Who are the Mr. and Mrs. Buyers that have come to you? Think about those folks. Um, you can send them back to us through the CRM. I'm going to circulate this slide deck to Sarah and a link that you can all you have to do. It's kind of look, look kind of funny. It's like a long link, but just click on that. Um, you can go to our, you'll take you to our website that you can become a partner and sign up with us um, and just go from there. So makes life a lot easier for you. Uh, but that's basically it. Um, any other questions that you guys might have that I might have missed through the presentation? Hey, Chris, Lee Allen, real quick. Yeah. Um, I noticed way back in the slide deck 
and you guys talked about repairs, two hundred dollars, this and that. Mm -hmm. I can just see. I can see repairs becoming an issue and an agent becoming the go-between here for 12 months or whenever while they're trying to help make that work. How do you guys no. handle that, or is the agent integral in that 12-month period? No, 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 no. Great question. You're done. When we close, you're done. So you got to like that's that that's that thing I'm talking about with it, with that with with realizing okay I brought the client to Landis, but Landis is now my client, right? They're going to be a tenant renting and they belong to Landis as a customer or tenant. So I represent Landis in the transaction as the buyer's agent. When we close on that house, I'm done. Like you don't, if you want to stay in contact, because obviously people, you know, they get the three year itch or the five year itch or whatever, please, by all means do. Uh, but you are not the go between at that point at all. They're, we're in contact with them on a monthly basis, if not more often, because we're making sure that they're on track financially to buy the house from us. So if something comes up, we're gonna know about it and we're gonna handle it between us and them. They are our tenant. Okay. Like if you help an investor buy a house, you're not responsible to talk to the tenant in the house between him and them. That's between him and his management company or him and, yeah, directly. So great question. Okay, thanks Chris. Yeah. Anything else? Hey Chris, are you able yeah, to hey. share the website in the chat? Oh yeah. Um, if you have it on hand. <laughs> let me see. Here we go. Whoops. Got it to everyone. There we go. There's the website there, landis.com. Awesome. Yep. Oh, I didn't see someone was asking. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, uh, I have a client. I didn't see this in the chat. Okay, we'll run through this real quick. I have a client who's about to close and he spent his spent his down payment money. We need time for him to save up enough down payment for closing. Is this something you could do? Um, yes. Okay, I see. So we, that was earlier on. So 10.07. Okay, we talked about that and how we do that via the rent that we collect. How is it different from Ribbon or Home Partners of America? Uh, Ribbon is going to help your contingent buyers uh, and, and sellers. So if they have a house they own already, they want to buy another house, Ribbon can help give them a bridge loan. It's basically what it is. It's a bridge loan. Uh, but it helps them get into the new house while they're trying to sell their old house. Um, so they can rent, use, and if they have a financing contingency, um, uh, they can help, Ribbon can help turn that offer into cash versus having a financing contingency. So in a hot market, um, Ribbon would be able to do that for them. They can rent the home, but Ribbon is only a six month rental period. They don't want to rent to people. That's only in case the financing doesn't get lined up between um, closing and when they make the offer. Home Partners is a three-year program, uh, up to three years. Um, generally speaking, about 95% don't ever convert to homeowners uh, with Home Partners. Divi is another one that does something similar to what we do, uh, but very few of their folks actually convert. In fact, if you look up um, Divi, Divi Homes, I think it's Divi, I think it's just Divi, D-I-V-V-Y, um, you can find an interview with their CEO, I forgot her name, uh, but you can find an interview with her where she talks about what their goal is, and their goal is to have a rental property portfolio. Um, they're trying to become a REIT and go public. And she outlines that very clearly of how many homes they need to have in order to do that. So right there, their goal is not to make people homeowners. Their goal is to have a rental property portfolio. Ours is completely different based upon a 12-month program. We're not trying to keep people uh, as renters. We're trying to make them into homeowners. Um, so that's what is the big difference between us and those uh, home partners or Divi um, and then Ribbon. Uh, Lee he says, I can see repairs. Be okay, sorry, you already asked that question. Great. And Landis, success rate, we convert from folks that move in. Um, we're work working those numbers right now, but it looks closer to 80% uh, converting to homeowners. Not everybody converts for various reasons. They want to walk away or whatever the case may be. And not everybody, uh, once you send a client to us, some agents will wonder, like, what happened? Um, sometimes they don't stay in good contact with their clients afterward once they send that person to us to apply. The person applies, they get approved, but they don't want to use our program. They want to wait or whatever that happens too. So, and not everybody gets approved. Uh, 20 to 40 percent maybe get approved. I would say it's closer to maybe 30, 20, 30 percent. So you might send us 10 leads and only two get approved. That's because our program is, you know, it's it's geared towards somebody who's going to be ready in the next six, 12 months. It's not geared towards somebody who's like a 400 credit score or whatever. We can't help those folks um, if credit scores even go that low. But I think you get the point that we're trying to find a specific type of person, um, but that's okay because you haven't had to do any work. All you had to do is kind of explain our program 
answer a few questions. If you need help with that, I can help with that. And then send them to us and we qualify them, you know? So it makes it very, very easy for you as the agent. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of the morning. Any other quick questions I can run through? Otherwise, I'll send Sarah my contact info um, and you guys can reach out with any questions that way and a link uh, that you can sign up to be a partner as well. Any last questions, guys? All righty. All right, great. Well, thanks, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I'm in Charlotte, so I live over near Skybrook on the north side of Charlotte, so I'm a local guy. Um, if you guys want to reach out for whatever reason, I'm happy to uh, connect with you guys. I usually do some uh, presentations at Superior School and some other places that I'm trying to become an instructor there as well. So hopefully I'll see you guys around uh, um, in the future. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank Best you. of luck. Stay safe.